Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today we're in the ship's brig again, and uh, this time one of my co-workers has been doing some research at the National Archives and uh, found some really interesting records on offenses and punishments that sailors got on this ship. I have uh, seven pages of offenses here from May of 1951. Uh, so it seems like this ship's crew got a little rowdy during the Korean War. So before we get to those, again, this is the ship's brig. New Jersey does not have her original brig. Ours is converted into a weight room in the 80s. The other three Iowas all have their original brigs still intact. So you can go out and see what an original Iowa brig would look like on them. On this ship, uh, they tried to recreate it based on some stuff we had stripped off of other ships and uh, some, some blueprints. And based on what I've seen on the other Iowas, it isn't 100% accurate, but it's pretty close. Because we don't have the weight equipment anymore, that's why we chose to backdate this space to how it would have looked earlier. Uh, which is also why it's this green color, which is the color the ship's interior would have been painted earlier in the ship's career. So it's one of only three spaces on the ship that we've backdated. Some interesting features that you might see in here, uh, many of the punishments in here that get assigned to the brig are for multiple days. So you've got pipe racks in here to sleep on, and uh, there was also a concern that sailors would try to get themselves out of the brig by injuring themselves so they go to sick bay, which is a much better uh, place to be confined. So, uh, for example, our mirror is made out of brass, well, this might be bronze, uh, but regardless, I can't break it, create glass, hurt myself, hurt the marine who guards here. Um, and then another feature of the brig on Iowa-class battleships is it is the only freshwater toilet on the entire ship. So you can't drink the salt water that is in any of the other toilets to make yourself sick to go to the brig. Uh, it is fresh water if you feel compelled to drink toilet water. Otherwise, uh, the brig is not a pleasant place to go. You're confined. Uh, besides the drunk tank over there, most of our cells are one man. So you're, you're confined. You've got the Marines here. You know there's a rivalry between Marines and sailors. So you know the Marines aren't treating sailors who have been disobedient well. Uh, you don't want to get sent here. And yet, it's interesting seeing what some of these offenses are. Uh, so, all of these records are publicly available at the National Archives. So, uh, well, here's a fun one. W.W. Nolan, um, his offense, absent over leave for eight days, eight hours, and 30 minutes. And then again, absent over leave uh, for 24 days and seven hours and missed the ship. So it looks like he was absent over leave for eight days, uh, missed the ship, and that forced him to be absent for the other 24 days, which is why it's broken up in that even though it's consecutive dates. His punishment is a special court-martial, so that will determine further punishment for uh, being absent without leave. Uh, GM Weir, he uh, entered another man's locker without permission, and so his punishment is confinement for a period of seven days. So he gets stuck in a brig cell for a full week. It's interesting seeing that because oftentimes you don't want to lock sailors up in the brig. It means they're not working. You deduct their pay. You deduct their rating. You put them back out to work. I suspect um, most of these guys... Oh, yeah, yeah. Muir, uh, seaman apprentice. So he is basically the lowest rank on the ship. He doesn't have any specialty skills. So they can't drop his rank. Uh, his, his pay is already pretty low. They don't need him working. He's, he's just a strong back and a weak mind, as they say. Uh, so it does make sense to send somebody like that to the brig. Oh, here's a Marine that got sent to the brig. Disobedience of orders. Uh, this is uh, E.R. Peterson. Disobedience of orders, and his punishment is uh, confinement on bread and water for three days. And again, he's a private first class, so that, that is the rank that a Marine holds when they get out of boot camp. He, he is not somebody vital to the operation of the ship. So let's check another page. I read you three of the uh, seven punishments on that page. This is interesting. So we've got a uh, summary court-martial here, number 42, TAC 51, 
for an ML Phillips. Absent over leave for a period of 17 hours and 40 minutes. At the expiration of which he surrendered himself on board the ship. So he got back from Liberty late by a couple hours. On May 11, 1951, he has a summary court-martial uh, with Captain Robert Willard, U.S. Marine Corps, as the uh, senior officer present. That's interesting. This guy is a seaman in the Navy. Uh, the finding is that he is guilty. He pled guilty. Specification proved by plea. And the sentence to be confined for a period of 22 days and to lose 28 dollars per month of his pay for a period of three months, uh, total loss amounting to $84, and uh, the deprivation of liberty on shore, on foreign station, for a period of three months. Uh, so by this point, May of 51, Battleship New Jersey is off the coast of Korea, so it would exclusively be foreign liberty in Yakuska, Japan, or potentially somewhere on Korea, although that's a war zone, or somewhere else in the, in the Far East. So that actually is a punishment. It's not like punishment on shore while we're home ported out of Norfolk. Okay, on May 30th, 1951, um, the sentence is approved. And on 17 June, 1951, uh, but the loss of pay is reduced to the loss of $28 per month for only two months. Total loss being $56, not uh, $84. And the period of deprivation for liberty being reduced to two months. So they might have thought that that punishment was too harsh. Or uh, he, he might have just been doing a good job during that period of time. So this is inter this is June, so May, June. So, so one month later, they see that the guy's doing well, and, and maybe they reduce his sentence. Let's see what else we've got here. Go oh, oh, R.C. Case, Seaman, United States Navy, has four offenses here. Uh, one, intoxicated. Two, Threatening a Hawaii Armed Service Police Patrolman. Three, direct disobedience of orders. And four, profanity. This punishment is a summary court-martial. So you can see that uh, the results from court-martials tend to be confinement, uh, redu reduction of pay, re loss of leave. Uh, but that will then be tried separately. Let's see. Oh, here's a fun one. Uh, W.M. Cummings... Seaman, United States Navy, his offense, urinating in public. And then we've got a uh, Seaman Gamble. His uh, offense is a failure to muster as a prisoner at large. And so he's punished with three additional days, bread and water and confinement. Uh, so oftentimes you would be released from confinement in the brig outside of sleeping hours uh, so that you could go and do your job. And they would, or they would uh, muster sailors like that early in the morning to be given their extra duty assignments and it seems like this guy didn't show up for his muster and so he's back in the brig again. Oh, and then we've got a uh, seaman apprentice Steerns who is, uh, his offense is assault and battery and he spends five days in the brig on uh, bread and water. <laughs> uh, this is a good page. They must have had a great liberty here. Uh, Bosun's mate wind uh, sleeping on the street in Honolulu while on liberty, no identification or liberty card, uh, 14 days deprivation of liberty on shore. So this would have been when the ship was in Honolulu prior to departing for uh, her to Korean deployment in May of 51. So it sounds like the, the crew threw a real rager on their way headed out to war. And so we have a P. Drayton here whose offense is throwing coffee at another steward in the wardroom, insubordination, and direct disobedience of orders. His punishment is uh, five days bread and water with a full ration every third day in confinement. So th there is a rule about you can't put someone on bread and water permanently. Obviously that doesn't have enough nutritional value for long-term punishment, but they do want to punish you uh, with reduced rations and things like that. So. They have to give him enough nutrition periodically. Seaman Bowling created a disturbance and public nuisance while on liberty in Honolulu. Punishment is 14 days deprivation of liberty ashore. It seems like a lot of these uh, shoreside uh, liberty offenses 
One, because the ship had to go to sea, they're, they're being tried on board. They're not being tried in criminal court in Hawaii. Uh, so it, it seems like the shore patrol went to all the local uh, jail cells where these guys were held, took them all out, put them on the ship. The ship goes to sea. And it seems like they're relatively uh, light on them. 14 days dep deprivation of liberty. And it seems like a reduction in liberty for most of them. Uh, whereas the ones who come back drunk and disobey orders on board and things like that, they're the ones that end up stuck here in the brig. Yeah, and it's worth pointing out, Honolulu uh, Police Department probably used to drunken sailors on liberty and, and uh, dealing with the shore patrol, getting people back to their ships. Uh, I, I bet they, they talk with the Navy and know what ships are coming in after months at sea and are going to cause a problem, which ships are about to go out especially to a war zone and, and have an idea of, all right, if we catch anyone with a uh, USS New Jersey rocker, we got to uh, get them back to the ship and they'll be dealt with there. It's worth pointing out that uh, nowadays you are both able to have civilian clothes on the ship and go out on liberty in civilian clothes. World War II, Korea, Vietnam, that wasn't necessarily the case. New Jersey, you're not allowed to, wear, to have civilian clothes on the ship until the 1980s. So when you leave for liberty, you are in your uniform. When you report back aboard, you are in your uniform. And many sailors would rent a locker ashore at the Navy base or somewhere else. So when the Liberty launch drops them off, they could go drop their uniform off in their locker, put on their civilian clothes, go out on town. But you're still supposed to carry your ID card as identification. So it's interesting how many things on this list are showing guys out of uniform or, uh, missing their Liberty card. And I have to wonder, out of uniform, like, in theory, you are allowed to change out of uniform depending on what type of Liberty you're on. Um, if it's just like an eight hour Liberty, you probably have to stay in uniform. But if you get a couple of days on Liberty, you're, you're allowed to change out of it. So I suspect some of these are, they are partially in a uniform, so they're still representing the US Navy, the US Marine Corps, but their uniform is disheveled in some way. Out of uniform could be anything from, uh, you don't have your kerchief on or your partially exposed, you don't have your pants on, or it could even be uh, you've turned up your sleeves to show all the embroidery work you have on there, uh, which you're not supposed to do, but you know, often you don't get caught for. But you know, if you're being a problem, drunken, disobedient, that sort of stuff, they'll write you up for absolutely everything. So it's just interesting looking at these. It seems like we have pages and pages of them from May of 51 uh, that are probably th things done right before the ship leaves. Uh, Hawaii on her way to the war zone, the crew releasing some of their pent-up excitement. Again, these are available through the National Archives, so in addition to what you've seen here, you can certainly uh, go and look on their website for things related to Battleship New Jersey and other ships, or uh, go to College Park, Maryland in person and go through their archives. Uh, like I said, we currently have a researcher there who's going through and scanning pages for us. Sailors certainly love sea stories. What is the best story about a sailor getting arrested on Liberty or an arrest in general that you've ever heard? Let us know in the comment section down below. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate your support. There's a link in the description below if you'd like to donate to support the museum. You can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find about the museum and our channel. Thanks for watching.